So with Barack Obama, Barack Obama was put in office for two reasons. One was domestic, one was international. Every president of America is given a domestic mandate and an international mandate. Barack Obama's international mandate was to make Africa and its resources safe again for Western exploitation, in particular through the AFRICOM program of putting United States military bases within African soil geographically located close to places with high levels of mineral reserve. So what's going on in Ghana right now? An agreement between the Ghanaian government and the United States to put a military base in Ghana. This is all strategic to make sure that if Africa ever decides to rise up and push back against European imperialism, a.k.a. white supremacy, they will not be in a military position to be able to do that. So Obama succeeded. And the reason he succeeded in Africa is because Africa, just like black America, just like black Europe, thought the presidency of Barack Obama was a blessing because we don't understand white supremacy and we don't understand politics. It doesn't matter whose face is on the cover. It doesn't matter whose face is out front. The only thing that matters is the color of the hand that makes the decisions. Barack Obama was a flunky. He was a functionary. He was a stool pigeon and he was a puppet. And yes, he was a coon. Barack Obama did absolutely nothing to benefit Africa. He did absolutely nothing to benefit African people. Now, domestically, Barack Obama's job was to distract black people in America long enough for the government to take everything that our ancestors fought for, roll it up into one big ball, civil rights, voting rights, affirmative action, equality, you name it, and roll it on over to the feminist movement, roll it on over to the LBGT movement, and roll it on over to the multicultural movement. So today in America, whenever you hear civil rights discussed, Black people are not in the conversation. It's gays, it's feminism, or it's multiculturalism. They use Barack Obama to take everything black people fought for and give it to people who have never fought for black people. What do you know about the situation of black people in France? I'm somewhat familiar because I tend to study the international situation. Not thoroughly familiar, but I will say this. In all my travels, wherever I go, there's four things constant. I don't care if I'm in France, London, I don't care if I'm in South Africa, Nigeria, I don't care if I'm in Holland, Austria, Jamaica, Turks and Caicos, Canada, L.A., Houston, on the planet, there's four constants for African people. Number one, we're worshiping a white Jesus. I don't care where you go. Black people in love with a white Christ. That's number one. Number two, you have mass incarceration of black males at a rate four or five times their percentage of the population in that particular state. Number three. You have miseducation of black children. You have the over identification of black children in classifications of mental retardation, ADHD, learning disabled. You have record numbers of single black mothers raising our children on their own. OK. And then on top of that, you also have a black economy, which is totally dominated by people who do not look like us. I don't care where you go on the planet. Black people are not in control of their economy. Your rice, your bread, your milk, your sneakers, your hats, your clothing, your transportation, your electronics, everything you buy is being sold to you by somebody who don't look like you, but more importantly, don't care about you. What would be the solutions? Because, you know, this is a statement. But now what could be the solutions? Solutions are simple. And the solution hasn't changed as Marcus Garvey articulated it over 100 years again. Mm -hmm. And the solution is independence in all areas of human endeavor. The solution for African people is no different than the solution for Chinese people. The solution for African people is no different than the solution for the French people. It's the same. It's no secret. It's not hidden under a rock. We have to do what everyone else has done and has built ourselves up independently, economically, educationally, spiritually, socially, politically. We must become a power base, which we are not as we are today with all of our doctors, with all of our college educated folks, with all of our black capitalistic business owners who are only looking to get rich themselves, but do nothing to raise the general economic condition of black people, we are still a race of dependence. If you live in France, you're dependent on the French government for this and for that. You're dependent on white business to provide your basic needs. America, it's the same thing. Africa, it's the same thing. Wherever we are, we are dependent on the white power structure where we live. There's four institutions that you must have in order to be considered an independent community. We don't have them nowhere in space and time at the same time. A hospital to protect African life. 
a supermarket, okay, for nutrition to preserve African life. Education to prepare the next generation of African children for the role that they must play in the freedom struggle. And number four, a bank to finance the building of infrastructure and institutions and organizations and programs where we live. You cannot find those four things totally owned by African people anywhere on the face of the earth. But we will call ourselves free. There's two types of freedom. There's a F R E E D O M. And it's an F-R-E-E-D-U-M-B. White people have the freedom. We have the freedom because we're too politically uneducated to recognize that it doesn't matter if you can drive a Mercedes. It doesn't matter if you can live in a white suburb. It doesn't matter if your black child can go to a white school. At the end of the day, what do you control? What do you own? What do you produce? What do you distribute? Marcus Garvey said, a race without power and authority is a race without respect. A race that doesn't respect itself automatically forfeits the respect of other people. So you say, where did we begin? Two things, education and economics. Okay. It's gonna be hard to break the psychological chains of slavery as long as just about everyone in this room went to a white school to get their education, a white public school to get that education. And what is the function of public education? Whether it's UK, France, Austria, Germany, USA, it doesn't matter. The purpose of education for African children in a European context is to teach the African child that you are second place and that is where you will always stay. And the only way you can rise above it is if we give you permission to rise above it. The education system's job is to make sure black children never come to believe that they have a right to replace the white boy being in control. That was the next question I was going to ask you because you know when we speak about African Americans, do you think that African Americans are truly and deeply aware of their African roots? Well, I don't think that's a question just for African Americans. So I think that's a know? question for Africans anywhere. Yeah, of course, but I'm speaking about this because you are from from the United States, so of course. Right, I'm but I, I want to pan Africanize the question yes. though. Okay, all right. So because so whether so you're so dealing with France whether you're dealing with UK, whether you're dealing with black America, okay? So globally, yeah. Globally, yeah. it's no different. Yeah. Canada, it's yeah. no different. So do you think that Afro-descendants are really aware of their African roots? I think that we are aware of the roots, but we are in denial of the roots, okay? This is why black women spend billions of dollars on perm, weave, blonde hair, green eyes, blue eyes. This is why educated black men I don't care if they live in Paris. I don't care if they're in Austria, Holland, UK, Canada, US, or South Africa. Educated black men marry outside of their race more than the men of any other race put together because you hate yourself. And the reason, the reason why we do this is we actually think we can convince white people if we act white enough to accept us because we don't understand white supremacy and we don't understand eugenics. Eugenics is the science of exterminating the African DNA. It don't matter if you're light skinned with green eyes, you still African. It don't matter if you're blue, black, purple with nappy hair, you still African. It don't matter if you and parents in Paris speaking French or the U.S. speaking English. At the end of the day, you carry the gene of Africa. And that gene of Africa is the most powerful DNA on earth. We are the only people who can reproduce ourselves in every other group. I can make a baby with a Chinese woman. It's an African baby. I can make a baby with a French woman. It's an African baby. An Arab, an East Indian, a Native American. It's an African baby. You understand? Yeah. The white man cannot reproduce himself in any other woman but one who looks like him because he's genetically recessive. I'm genetically dominant, and that's why he must eliminate me. Because in the natural order of things, if I do absolutely nothing, we can literally predict the date where he will no longer exist. So he has to make a decision. He either has to get rid of me first before nature gets rid of him. So speaking about this, what is your feeling about interracial marriage? I don't support it. Why? I have nothing against white women or Chinese women or Arab women or East Indian women. But the black man belongs with the black woman. 
The first institution that has to be built is the black family. If you don't save that, you save nothing else. If you don't build that, you build nothing else. A white woman can understand my struggle. A Chinese woman can understand my struggle. And what black men fail to recognize, even when you marry white or Arab or Chinese or East Indian or Latino, that woman is still loyal to her race. So it doesn't matter if she had your baby. It doesn't matter if y'all got married. It doesn't matter if y'all sleeping with each other. At the end of the day, her loyalty is not to her husband. It is to her community. And at any moment that that community calls on her to do a job, she will do it. So even though you're laying on top of her, she's still in charge of you.